When Isaac Okoro was drafted fifth overall in the 2020 NBA draft, fans hoped he would follow the same developmental path as Jalen Brown, Jimmy Butler, or even Kawhi Leonard. As an elite defensive prospect with athleticism and reasonable looking shot mechanics, Okoro seemed like the type of player that could swiftly blossom into a 3 and D wing. But while most people were hoping for the high-end development of someone like Paul George, I always saw Okoro as the second coming of Andre Iguodala, specifically Iguodala during his time with the Warriors. I envisioned Okoro becoming a tanky wing who could dominate on defense with a savvy veteran skill set and find a comfortable supporting role for himself alongside a cast of highly talented offensive players. And up to this point, it seems like Okoro is falling right into place. He's been largely forgotten as a member of the Cavaliers' young core, given the arrival of Donovan Mitchell, Jared Allen, Evan Mobley, and Darius Garland. And while his teammates have made all-star caliber leaps, Okoro is still making notable jumps in development that shouldn't be overlooked. The difference maker for Okoro has always been the three-point shot. He shot just 29% from the three-point line as a rookie, and was hovering below this mark for the first 35 games of his sophomore season. But then, something clicked for Okoro in early 2022. He leaped from 28% in the first half of the season to over 45% in the back half. This stretch of games gave everyone hope for Okoro's third season, and reports of Okoro's hard work paying off over the summer had fans ready to buy in. And then, he opened up the 2022-23 season in another shooting slump. He was in a career-worst rut of 24% shooting from the three-point line during his first 37 games of the season. His confidence was plummeting, and with the Cavs' timeline being sped up by the trade for Donovan Mitchell, Okoro's future in Cleveland was quickly coming into question. But then, just as he did as a sophomore, Okoro started to build momentum. He put together a career-high performance eight days into the new year, drilling four of six three-pointers against the Phoenix Suns. From there, Okoro's confidence was exponential, as he has now put together a month and a half streak of shooting over 50% from the three-point line. He's raised his season average to 35.6, the best of his career, and it's looking like Okoro's growth as a shooter is legit. Mobley, into the corner, it's Okoro again. The Suns have left him there all night, and he plugged. He has the same hair, dude. He's got blonde hair. Yeah, Jeremy Sohan with the, with the Spurs. Deep three by Okoro. This has been a game changer for Cleveland as Okoro has slotted himself into the starting lineup and given the starters just enough juice to play with space. Opponents are finally being punished for leaving Okoro alone in the corner, and this has made the game easier for everyone, even Okoro himself, as he is now getting opportunities to attack closeouts and get into the paint. Okoro blows right by him and dunks it down and there was a foul. Looking at Okoro's shot chart, it's obvious he is playing to his strengths. He has always been a respectable free throw shooter, and all reports indicate that he is an incredibly hard worker, so it's no surprise he has found his touch from the three-point line. And in terms of attacking the basket, Okoro's physical gifts are getting a chance to truly shine. He moves like an NFL running back, and if you're able to get him the ball with a full head of steam going to the rim, he's tough to handle. Garland draws a crowd, Okoro fakes a three. Got Russell to lunge, he lays it in. Especially now that he is finally starting to play under control when gathering towards the basket. Okoro used to struggle heavily with taking care of the ball on his way to the rim. It's still something he can get better at, but this Euro step. Combination of three. Gorgeous drive like that. Facing up on Mobley, Muscala came over, forced the pass. Ball swung down to Okoro, and he slides inside and a little hop he now takes to slow his momentum before getting to the rim has allowed Okoro to finish at a higher percentage. Cavs catch a break. Toward the basket, lays it up and in, he went right around full to the rim. Another aspect of Okoro's game that will be unlocked by his improved ball control is playmaking. Okoro has sneaky great court vision and has made some high level passes throughout his young career. No, W's a W. Bucks have been without Chris Middleton. The Cavs with a steal, a Coro, a pretty play to poke it over to Osmond, and Osmond lays it in. What great basketball. Grind it out of fair through a little over two and a half quarters. There's a Coro, a touch pass, finds Allen, and Allen finger rolls it over the rim and cuts the Miami lead to 72-68. Look at this heads-up play to flip the ball back to Donovan Mitchell for a relocate corner three. Allen throws it out of Coro. Right back to Mitchell. And his three is good. 
Evan Mobley's the best sophomore in the game right now, gentlemen, as Mitchell sends it off to Mobley, now to Okoro, Okoro, Mitchell's wide open, he knocks it down. The main thing holding Okoro back from being a tertiary playmaker is his limited ball handle, but if he can continue to improve his dribbling, Okoro could establish himself as a solid wrinkle in Cleveland's offense, and most importantly, his improved control so far has given Okoro more opportunities to turn his defense into offense. Half of his, his field goals come from ducks in the paint. Grant denied this time at the rim. Okoro, the one to the cup. He's an impressive athlete with underrated speed, and he can outrun everyone else on the floor when he gets the chance. You know, sometimes on offense that gets risky. I was trying to do a little much there. When you talk about risky, that was risky, and a foul on Nemhard, and it's a 20 point Cavaliers lead. Tom again, throws it away. Allen, a twirl. Holiday pivots toward the basket. Allen grabs the rebound. That's his fourth. Rubio with his head up. How about that pass to a Coro right on the money? He never stops running and his constant hustle allows him to track down loose balls and save plays with timely offensive Coro rebounds. knocks it away from Poole. A Coro does. That's what Poole would like to have back. Three-point shot has really been the difference for the Cavaliers. They're 10 of 28. And Colonel Mitchell. Unfortunately, Curls right there to gather it back in. Before the officials could see it. That was Smith again trying to initiate contact, and Pacers nearly had the steal. Okoro lays it in. Well, they're yeah. playing fast. But if there's one area I think Okoro can still improve, it's his off ball movement. He's had some strong moments where he cuts into space and makes himself available for easy layups. But finding a way to put more pressure on the defense, besides standing still in the corner, could go a long way. Okoro can add something to his game called stampeding, a move where you start your attack on the basket before catching the ball. Thinking Basketball did a great video detailing how non-shooters can create space by being a threat to stampede. And I think Okoro fits this mold perfectly. Rather than standing stationary in the corner and having to attack from a triple threat position, Okoro can catch the ball running and beat defenders as they are turning to close out to him. Given Okoro's muscular build and explosive athleticism, this should be an easy way for him to apply pressure on the rim. But even as he currently stands, Okoro has made massive improvements to his game and is well on his way to being a valuable role player for Cleveland.